Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, folks. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining. And let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Let's get some of that good amicus action going on. Okay. I find myself staring up at the wolf, his massive paws on my shoulders, his knees spread to either side of my thighs as he's careful not to rest his weight on top of me. Ooh, excuse me. He grins down at me, chest heaving for breath as his tongue dangles out of his muzzle a bit the way it sometimes does when he's buzzed, giving his grin a dopey quality. He's hunched over me to the point where his tongue almost touches my nose. Although I try to keep my face in a scowl, I can't stop the smile from coming through, and pretty soon I'm laughing a little. I'm about to tell Amicus that this whole thing is hardly fair when he leans down fully, pressing his lips to mine in a kiss. I gasp in surprise, but it's through my nose as my mouth is sealed to his. My eyes are wide, his closed as he presses harder against my lips. As he'd bent over me, his paws left my shoulders to instead hold my head steady, one paw against my cheek, the other cupped around my head, his whole body huddling around my face. I don't move, not hugging back, but not turning away either. Instead, I just lay there as I feel my heart skip a beat. The feeling of the big, strong wolf crouched over me, kissing me, sending a thrill, sending a thrill from my chest down to my crotch. The wolf's broad, cold nose twitches against mine before a hot huff of breath escapes it and washes over my face. At the same time, Amica suddenly rolls off of me, our lips parting just as quickly as they'd connected as he flops to the side on his back, mirroring my spread eagle position. We lay there next to each other, my heart hammering as I listen to the wolf breathing heavily next to me. Aside from that, the only other sounds are the waves crashing upon the shore a few dozen yards away. A few minutes pass in silence as I wait for the wolf to say something. He doesn't. Finally, it gets to the point where I have to say something. So... Hmm? Amicus responds instantly with an innocent, inquisitive grunt. Oh, uh, what was that? That? Oh, the kiss. Yeah. Just that I owed it to you after Mira. I botched it during the performance, after all. The wolf sounds distant, distracted, like he's not paying attention to me. I finally prop myself up on an elbow, looking directly at Amicus now. Really? Like a child, Amicus looks away toward the lake, not saying anything. I wait a while longer, giving him a chance to respond, a chance he doesn't take. I sigh. Talk to me. What is there to say? I frown. A lot. I'm kind of confused, honestly. A big huffing sigh, then... I like you, Killian. Quite a bit, in fact. I know. I like you, too. We technically confessed our feelings to each other when Amicus asked me on that date, but only technically. Are you drunk? Maybe a little, but I knew what I was doing. More silence. Amicus? Hmm? Could you look at me? Amicus's ears go flat, then he slowly turns his head toward me, but his eyes are down, looking at my chest rather than my face. I think about making a making a my eyes are up here joke, but I know it'll fall flat with him. Listen, we've already sort of talked about this. Uh, the problem is the situation we're in. It, it makes the whole dating thing impossible. I see Amicus smile at the word, but then frown again. I know, but if we feel the same, why not be a little closer? I know you'll have to leave soon, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the time we have together. Sure, but... I think that'll make saying goodbye a little harder, don't you? Maybe, but we'll find a way to see each other again. What he's saying makes sense, but this whole situation has red flags all over it. Having feelings for my abductor in a situation that's completely illegal is so wrong in so many ways. But it's so right, but it feels so right. Amicus is talking about it like it could be an innocent fling, but this feels like more than that. The wolf has the same dejected look he'd worn when he came out to me a few weeks ago, so I reach out a hand to rest it in his paw. He looks at me then, ears still low, but his expression hopeful. Everything's just so messed up and complicated. Yes, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have kissed you. Maybe not, I swallow, but I liked it. Amicus snaps his eyes back up to look at me. Really? Yeah. The wolf lets out a huge sigh of relief. He didn't kiss back, though. It worried me that I'd made a mistake once again. I was surprised is all. What do you mean, once again? The wolf seems to contemplate something, but then turns his face... Then turns on his side, too, finally facing me. About five years ago, I shared my first kiss with another male. One second, guys, I'm gonna... Okay. Oh? At the time, there were rumors that I'd performed poorly with a female my father had arranged for me to be with. Oh. Amicus's ears turns red. Anyway, so this male approaches me during the summer festival. He was the son of one of the triumph triumvirs of Trisley. He made it very clear what he wanted from me. He kissed me on the balcony while I, while a covert drone recorded the exchange. 
was broadcast on the information channels the next day. I frown. Why? Amicus shrugs, looking down at the sand. The Triumvirate had a past grievance with my father. He used mine and his own son's sexual preferences to get back at me. What happened then? Well, father used his power to shut down the networks along with banishing the Triumvir and his family to Ancorus. Amicus nods up at the sky where Ancorus looms monolithically in its faded chalky gray. It was an unpopular decision, but father felt it had to be done. Obviously, it's left me a bit worried about kissing and pursuing other men. I squeeze his paw. Well, you don't have to worry about that with me, obviously. I don't know anyone here, and I'm trying to stay out of other people's business as much as possible. I know. Amicus squeezes back. I'm still sorry, though. I should have asked or not done it. You're fine. Another stretch of silence, and I get the feeling that Amicus is waiting for an answer, which he confirms with, with what he says next. So, if you're fine with it, did you want to date me? Amicus says the foreign word very carefully, and for the moment, the linguist skips a beat in its steady translation, allowing him to speak the word unfiltered. It's still his voice, but the heavy accent that comes through is surprisingly, even a little, is surprising, even a little sexy. I know I should say no, though. The red flags fluttering ominously around are precarious, even dangerous, even dangerous situation. I'll, I'll think about it over the next few days, th then let you know. Amicus smiles a little. Okay. But you need to be focusing on the trial, so no thinking about this while I'm deciding. Of course! I groan inwardly as I realize I've just added another distraction to the wolf's goal of becoming emperor. You promise this won't distract you? Definitely not. I give the wolf a look of disbelief and he responds with a glare. Killian, I've wanted this my entire life. I know it might not have seemed like it earlier, but I'm taking this very, very seriously. And I won't be a distraction. Of course not. In fact, I think it would be rather positive for me to know that you returned my feelings to some degree. It gives me even more confidence. Oh, God, no. Hey. Amicus sits a paw on my shoulder, and it looks like he wants to lean in to kiss me again, but doesn't. Thank you for understanding and for putting up with me. I have a good feeling about, well, everything now. I don't know how much I agree, considering our situation is causing us so many problems, but I set my hand on his paw anyway. Sure. <sighs> Ooh, pretty. Our relationship after that conversation is strange, to say the least. It, while it felt meaningful at the time, I realized later we didn't that we didn't really get anywhere except once again admit to the feelings that we'd been having over the past few weeks. Anicus is extra careful about touching me now, probably because he doesn't want me to misconstrue it for something more than it is. At the same time, our conversations have become less casual and joking and more stiff and awkward. I hate it. In any other situation, I just want to sit down and talk my feelings out with a person, but Amicus is different. First of all, he's an alien, and having feelings that I do for an alien, a wolf alien at that, is weird. And secondly, this relationship, this, this closeness, it's, it's just not important in the grand scheme of things. We're currently doing something so illegal that if it were to be found out, it, it could bring the entire empire to a standstill. At least more than it already is. So instead of playing out one of the cheesy, woven romance dramas I've seen on Ad Astra television... Maybe instead I should be focusing on how the hell I'm going to exist in this empire, especially if the second trial falls through. But, Amicus wants a relationship with me. That much he's made clear. I just wonder if it's true, if it truly would help him like he says it will, or if he's just saying that so I'll give him what he wants. I don't doubt that the wolf likes me, maybe even more than that, but we've only known each other for about a month. Do we really even know anything about each other? Despite all this, and after a few days of thinking about it, I start to warm up to the idea. We both know it'll be short, an innocent fling, like I'd thought of it earlier. We could be leaving for Earth any time in the next month, but I can't deny that I really like him, too. An innocent fling. The more I say it in my head, the better it sounds. Despite everything, knowing that I could have a relationship with an alien, the son of an emperor, actually, someone who likely be, would, will likely become the emperor, that's kind of cool. And besides, he did say it would help him with his confidence for the trial, and finally, I'm tired of this awkwardness between us. Amicus is my friend, and I want to be able to talk normally with him again. I am pretty sure making things official will clear everything up. I just have to go about doing it the right way. The day before the trial, Amicus shoes me and Alex out into the gardens. It's strange, but he tells us that they need to be tended to, considering that the camera drones are going to sweep over the grounds for an opening shot before the second trial begins. It's the first time he's ever really asked me to do a task, and when I point that out to him, he says that he also needs time alone to practice his speech. That makes sense, but it's still a little odd. Alex and I stand in the gardens, picking at the weeds just like I had on the first day at the palace. 
It's hard to believe a month's gone by, even with the 19th, 19 hour days. I guess it's been about three weeks in Earth time. I get to work pulling up the small white flowers, but the ones that seem growing in every crevice of the garden. You'd think the drones would be smart enough to take care of the weeds themselves. Well, they don't have appendages to pull with. All they could really do is use their high-powered lasers, but that risks starting fires. The drones have lasers? Oh, yes, they need some form of, def of a defense mechanism. Huh. I mean, it's not like you'd they'd ever use it on you. Even if they did, it's not enough to kill you, at least not quickly. It just leaves nasty burns. I find myself continuing to glance up at an astron astro spider sitting motionlessly on the wall of the palace. I wish they'd use them on those hideous things. It takes Alex a moment to see what I'm looking at. Oh, Killy, you know those are important for the... Ecosystem, yeah, I know. It doesn't make them any less disgusting. I imagine one of those things biting you. Indeed, though, honestly, I've been vaccinated so many times after coming to an astro that sharp, pointy things don't scare me so much anymore. We work quietly for a few more minutes, Alex lazily humming as I try to think of a way to bring something up that I've wanted to talk about with the cat. So... So... I watch as Alex's paw works fast, plucking the weeds with speed and precision. What's your relationship with Cassius like? I see Alex's paw f paws freeze for a moment, then quickly return to their work, the dirty pile of weeds next to him growing larger and larger on the marble floor. Our relationship? You already know that, Killian. I'm his pet. Just like you are Amicus's pet. He smiles at me. At this point, I decide to stop letting the cat play his little game with me. I give him a look that says, Oh, come on, and I see his ears fall a bit. What? You know exactly what. I think it's pretty obvious the two of you are, I don't know, something more. This is the first time I've called the cat out on his polite pet facade, and I see that it's thrown him off a bit. His ears are down, and he's staring hard at his paws, pushing through the weeds, though he's no longer plucking them. That's such a forward question, Killian. I wonder if his demeanor just has to do with his cat modesty, or if there are actual laws against pet master relationships. Come on, we're friends. Besides, I want some advice. Now his ears perk up a little. Oh, with what? Well, first I want to know if, you know, something's going on between you and Cassius. Then I'll then I'll know if you can answer. Alex sighs huffily and sits back on his rear, looking a bit childish with his legs and feet splayed out in front of himself. I don't know why it matters. Well, I don't know how things are on Amf Amorpha. And where I'm from, friends talk about their relationships with each other. It's actually strange not to tell your friend about who you're in a relationship with. Though his ears are folded down, I can see how red they are. We're not in an official relationship, but there are feelings between us, yes. Ha! I knew it. Really? Alex snaps his gaze to mine. Why do you sound so surprised? I'm not surprised, just fascinated. I'm not. You two are just really different. How so? I mean, do I have to explain it? Alex is quiet. Well, you're so reserved and quiet, and he's so... Now that I know Alex actually likes Cassius, I don't want to be too offensive. Cassius. Alex sighs. Yes, Cassius is very Cassius, but there's a lot more to him than what he puts out in public. So you like him? Parts of him, yes. Alex has lowered his voice to the point where I almost can't hear him, so I do the same. So are you, like, in a relationship? I don't know what they're called on it, Astra. Alex bristles. Well, it is simply called a relationship. The only official status is marriage, and that's only between males and females. What about between males? There is none. Why are you so curious? Alex looks at me carefully, eyes narrowed. I shrug. Just wondering, I'd like to learn about the culture I'm in. I see. Are you interested in Amicus? Now it's my turn to blush. I... no. Killian, you can tell me. I thought we were friends. I get the feeling that Alex is a lot better than me at these games. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I guess I was wondering how I'd go about if it decided... if I decided... I guess I wonder how I'd go about it if I decided to... Aw, oh, that's adorable! All I can do is response, and all I can do is response is blush, a, is blush a deeper shade of red. So you're asking how to tell a wolf that you're interested? Yeah. Well, between males, it usually happens naturally. Without saying so. If you haven't noticed, there's a stigma against same-sex relationships on Ad Astra. Leaving the status of a relationship unsaid makes it less likely that you'll be found out. I think for a moment. Amicus seemed to want me to make the relationship official. I guess he's just going by my standards, then. He probably wants me to ask... Me Ask him to date me, Earth style. Alex goes back to plucking some of the weeds. However, I feel that things are changing, though very slowly. Honestly, someone like Amicus becoming Emperor would be really something. I'm about to ask Alex how prominent the rumors are about Amicus when I suddenly hear footsteps. I look up, half expecting to see the wolf, but instead... Oh. Kidder simply stares at us, his paws behind his back as usual. 
moment of silence goes by before Alex suddenly stumbles to his feet. Paul is clasped in front of himself before bowing low. I quickly, I quickly follow suit, a few seconds behind the cat. Isabelle, I notice, Isabelle, I notice how dirty my robe is at the knees. Alex remains bowed as so I do the same, listening to Kato's footsteps come closer. He stops a few feet away, and I can see his worn, blunt claws on the top of my vision. He stands there for a very long time, not saying anything, forcing me and Alex to remain stooped. As my back starts to ache, I realize that he must, must be doing this on purpose. Are we in trouble or something? Finally, he speaks, and I almost jump. Alexios, Killian, how are you this evening? Alex straightens, straightens up, and, so, and I do the same, stifling my groan of relief. If Alex is sore, he's not showing it at all as he fixes a smile on his face. Wonderful, your Imperial Majesty. I hope the same is for you. I open my mouth, trying to think of something to say, though Alex didn't leave me much room to do so. It doesn't seem to matter, though, as Cato starts speaking, reminding me that I'm still supposed to be a near-mute primitive. Sadly, no, Alexios. I was just in the city today, and I was hearing some unfortunate rumors amongst the officials. Another long pause. Oh? The corner of Cato's mouth twitches, and while I usually have a hard time knowing what the old wolf is thinking, I can tell that right now he's not happy. Indeed, rumors about Cassius and his intentions involving the triumvirates if he becomes an emperor. It takes me a moment to know that what they're talking about, then I remember. The triumvirates? I, I wonder why? Alex puts on a very innocent, confused look, even though I know that he knows what this is about. I wonder as well, which is why I'm curious to know if either of you have heard the rumor, or possibly the source of the rumor. Immediately, I feel sweat starting to break out of my forehead, and I'm glad that I'm already sweating from the heat. I'm sorry to say that I do not know your Imperial Majesty. And the moment of silence goes by, and that's when I notice that Cato's waiting for me to answer. I choke on my words for a moment, adjusting my brain to dumb ape mode. Uh, what is triumvirates? Cato's mouth twitches again. Anyway, I'm on my way to Cassius's room to let him know the news. Please accompany me, Alexios. Yes, Emperor. Alex quickly hops to attention as Cato turns with a twirl of his robes, heading back up the path as Alex quickly follows. I left to stand there alone for a moment, watching the two of them disappear amongst the bushes. So, someone has told some of the officials about Cassius's plan to eliminate the Triumvirates. Despite Alex's innocent act, I assume it had to be him. Either that or it was Virginia. I wonder if Cato is already suspicious about Alex, and if that's the case, it, it could all come back to me. I hope not. The idea of playing politics amongst these passive-aggressive wolves is not at all appealing. I spend a few more hours weeding the gardens on my own, knowing that I won't be able to make much much progress alone. After a while, I meander around the gardens a bit, wanting to go back inside, but not really wanting to bother Amicus while he studies. While I'm doing that, though, while I'm doing that, though, I think more and more about what Alex and I had been talking about. Should I just confess my feelings to Amicus and close the awkward gap between us? I know it's weighing on his mind. Maybe asking him out will give him the bet boost that he needs to win. Maybe I'm just trying to convince myself, but I realize that is something that I want to do. If I'm going to do it, it's probably best to do it before the trial, to set my, his mind at ease. Carefully, I pick a few flowers from the gardens, not making the giant bouquet that Amicus has made for his own proposal, but enough to look nice, at least in my opinion. Alright, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next, uh, until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. I'm going to get ready for bed. Bye-bye!